I'm looking at all of you, but I, there's something burning in the side of my head here. I look up and I, I can't help but sense that somewhere down the road, there's going to be a critique <laughs> of all of this. Everybody's done pretty well so far. I don't know if I want to take too many risks here. But uh, so much to say, so little time to say it. That's the way I feel, and it's appropriate because I often felt that way when I was working with Daryl as a reporter. Daryl uh, had many lessons, storytelling lessons, and one of the first with me was about the importance of word economy. <laughs> Why write four sentences when four words should do? And Daryl was a great writer, but he told me that if there was ever a perfect television news story, it would probably be shot by him, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it would have no need for a reporter except to help carry the gear. <laughs> So my contribution to help proving him right over the years led to a double hernia operation. <laughs> so I felt like I did my part in that. Let the pictures and sound tell the story, Daryl would always say, they are the power of the medium. And he's certainly right, especially the way he could shoot and edit and write. I worked with Daryl most of his 14 years at Channel 4, WKY there when we started, and it's on the little placard over there. Left the dust on it in its original condition. Um, so Daryl got there in 1969 and the station already had a reputation for excellence in news photography. And over the years, Barton often gave credit for that to people like Houston Hall, Scott Berner, Cliff Atkins, and gave credit to the new news managers like Ernie Schultz and Jack Ogle for keeping that bar high. But Daryl took it to another level, and he did it, of course, in his own unique, impactful, and memorable way. And if we just listed the local, regional, national accolades that Daryl earned, it would take literally the rest of the afternoon. I know he was NPPA National News Photographer of the Year at least twice. He was largely responsible for Channel 4 being Television News Photography Station of the Year twice in the 70s. So many awards. Daryl's in the Oklahoma Journalism Hall of Fame and rightfully so. And all those awards speak to Daryl's incredible body of work, but it doesn't begin to explain what he meant to so many of us working with him and friends with him. Daryl liked to refer to himself as a cameraman. He was certainly that. Photographer, photojournalist, videographer, all those labels could work. But you can't leave it at that. It would be like calling Picasso a painter. Daryl was a brilliant photographer, but he was much more than that. Daryl was an artist. I worked 45 years in the television news business. Worked with a lot of outstanding people, some in this room today. But I've never seen anybody Kind of to Larry's point, never seen anybody with a better innate sense of storytelling. And I'm not talking about just getting the pictures. Daryl had this uncanny, almost unworldly ability to sense not just the story, but all the little things, all the nuances, all the little pieces that create a powerful emotional connection with an audience. That's pretty important in television. Daryl knew how to move people. He could feel it as it was happening. 
and man, he could make it come pouring out of a television set. Daryl was an artist. Now, he'd probably push back on using that term to describe him. Artist, a little haughty for who he was as a person. He could relate to all types of people, as we've heard. Had a great sense of humor and infectious laugh that I miss very much. I'm telling you, he's told stories about me that were, had barely any truth to begin with. <laughs> But somehow he managed to embellish that each time he told them, many times, over 40 plus years. And they got better. I laughed even harder at myself. Daryl was entertaining. But Daryl could also be relentlessly tough and stubborn about his standards and expectations. In his job as chief photographer at Channel 4, he had a way of... Uh, how shall we put this? Inspiring people to do better. His, you know, the old Marine would come out sometimes and his critiques could be wrapped in barbed wire. And if you got past that, probably some landmines, grenades in there. Over the years I saw him make coworkers mad, including me, he made some cry. He made some quit. One, on the day they started, as I recall. <laughs> they got an indoctrination from Daryl in the morning about how things would be, and the guy just didn't come back from lunch. <laughs> High expectations. But one of the ultimate measures of truly great performers in almost any endeavor is whether in their greatness they can make people around them better. And Daryl did that for all those years at Channel 4 and beyond. He expected, even demanded excellence from himself and for all of us working with him. So many of us benefited from that even if we didn't fully appreciate it at the time. Daryl helped make Channel 4 the great station it was, and he helped make me a better journalist, and I'll always be grateful to him for that. Daryl was such a memorable character, impossible to easily define, such a contrarian. I mean, the guy was a walking contradiction in so many ways. Like, I'd often try to figure out how could a guy who without a good night's sleep and about a barrel of coffee in the morning, sometimes only utter something like, huh, when spoken to in the morning. But yet, could find the perfect few words to make a good story great, or to persuade a reluctant story subject to speak on camera. Daryl could relate to all kinds of people. And how could a guy who had such delicate sensibilities about the visual aesthetics of a tender story be the same guy that just stepped out of a news car that looked like it had been used to haul trash the night before? <laughs> I'll admit it now, there are weaknesses here, so I don't have much choice, I guess, but I refused to go on an assignment with Daryl one day until he cleared out enough hamburger wrappers, film cans, cigarette butts, Twinkie crumbs, God knows whatever else was in that car, so I would just have a place to sit. <laughs> Somewhat reluctantly, he did that. That was a long day. <laughs> Daryl cannot be accused of being fastidious. And how could someone who had such a great feel for visual imagery be the same guy who showed up at a basketball game where thousands of people were attending, wearing clearly marked station gear, of course, with our general manager there, sitting with dignitaries? How could that guy now appear to actually be a plumber been over a set of hard-to-reach pipes. <laughs> yeah, you know the look I'm talking about. Didn't, didn't phase Daryl. 
did face the general manager when I tried to talk my way through it for him. There's all of that and so much more about Daryl, especially the eccentric side of, of Daryl. But I just keep coming back to the pure brilliance of the man, an icon really. Even given as much as he taught me about storytelling brevity, I can't do it. I can't adequately sum up in a few minutes. What a unique, fascinating person Daryl was, how enormously talented he was, and what a larger than life influence he had on Channel 4, an entire industry really, and all those who crossed his path. So I'm left, left with this, even if it just helps me and maybe some of you get past this tremendous loss. It has to do with one of the other many lessons Daryl taught me, and it's this. Every good story has a beginning and a middle and an end. That's a fact. I believe that to this moment. But in another contradiction of sorts, Daryl's story doesn't end. It didn't end when he died, doesn't end today, and it will never end as long as we do our part to share what Daryl taught us, what he stood for, and the passion he had to tell the kind of stories that resonate all the way into our hearts where they still stay. May his legacy live forever. God bless you, Daryl.